long story short is we used to do, uh, when I was with Fun Publications, we had the Transformers and GI Joe license, and the Transformers license went away, and as things were coming in, we were kind of looking at some other opportunities. Uh, I reached out to Playmates and told them of a concept for a Ninja Turtle convention and collector's club, and they were very interested and very receptive to the point of where we uh, exchanged emails and, and had a couple conference calls and then actually set up a meeting at the uh, Las Vegas Licensing Expo. Went out there and met with them and presented kind of a mock-up concept of how we could take existing tools and uh, develop a convention set. So, go ahead and space. So it would have been an official Teenage Mutant Ninja Collect Turtles Collector Convention. There's not really an organized, um, there's not really a centralized uh, Ninja Turtle uh, uh, collector um, focus. So that was something we were offering them. Uh, so this is basically just, like I said, we, turned, we did the same thing that we were just, that we, we did the same thing, we approached it the same way in this just mock-up concept that we did for Transformers of Joe, where we just took existing molds and uh, created either new characters or use those molds to create old characters. I think in this case it was all just taking existing molds, either create a classic version of that character or do a new version um, of an old character using a current existing mold of a different character. So for Leatherhead here it would have been uh, just the current Leatherhead to look like the old Leatherhead. Right. Uh, Mondo Gecko would have been done in his uh, classic colors. Um, this would have been a situation where we would have actually modified a character. We would have taken the Raphael and Wings suit and done uh, the Mutanimal Wingnut. Uh, same thing, Bebop. We figured out how we could actually modify that character and do a Ray Filet. This is actually one that was most exciting. That is just a, kind of a generic head. We actually would have done uh, artwork, uh, a new head sculpt. Uh, some of these, yeah, obviously some of these would have got new head sculpts, but just like with Transformers and Joe, she, that was just a very rough mock-up. The, the head sculpt would look a lot more like what was on the box art, so it would have actually done a Cheetah version of April O'Neil. And then a uh, Chrome Dome out of a uh, Shredder. And then he would have had his troop builders in the set. And then that's the artwork. Uh, Ronnie Musa did the art. Um, it's just a fantastic piece of art. It's a shame it was never really anything more than just a, uh, for a presentation. Um, but it would have been the name of the set would have been Mighty Mutanimal. Again, that was just a concept. Um, anytime you pitch something to someone with that, it's just it, it, parts of it may end up back, get, get, parts of it might end up getting done. Other parts, um, you know, again might just totally just be there for the proposal. In this case, all the parts were there just for the proposal, and we'll never see the light of day. That's an idea. We actually did actually a mock-up box set. So we actually took a uh, BotCon convention set, printed out uh, a full TurtleCon package to show them how a, uh, a TurtleCon uh, box set could look. And then we would have done some uh, souvenirs. Metalhead is uh, Metalhead Michelangelo. And next one. This was just the, uh, the verbiage we had in here, kind of told them what we could do. Uh, what, what the uh, attending, if someone's pre-registered for the show, if they were attending as a, uh, a pre-registrant, what they would get, you know, kind of very similar to what you would get with the BotCon and the GI Joe Con. Oh, the, the, the Michelangelo, that, that one was actually been like the free attending figure. Uh, another one, Pyroderm, uh, would have been uh, for Dr. L based on Krang. With actually, I'll go back to one actually, I don't know if we can go back or not. It would have, uh, uh, it, it would have had a like a water shooting feature, and then this would have taken Karai Serpent into Scale Tail with the glue her head on, and then uh, Casey Jones as Ace Duck, and uh, Leonardo in the Stealth Disguise as uh, kind of a ninja stealth panda con, and then we also showed them how we could do actually file cards with the old figure stands. We're going to do some new figure stands to actually kind of create little bases. Same for Mondo Gecko. And then we also pitched to them the idea of doing a collector's club, just like with Transformers and G.I. Joe. Again, Ninja Turtles doesn't really have a centralized um, fan base. 
don't know if that's the right way to say it, but it's not, they, they, there's no real organized fan base, I guess is a better way to say it. There's no uh, kind of place that you can go for all things uh, turtles. So we kind of left something we were to offer them. It's kind of like a, a home base for the, the, the turtle fandom. So we would have offered up a collector's hub, which would have had a, uh, a magazine, again, similar to BotCon and GI Joe Con. Uh, in 2018, I think actually I probably would have segued more into a half print, half uh, more, more of a focus um, with the uh, kind of the digital. But uh, we would have definitely, I think, kind of upgraded the. Uh, I guess the concept of what a collector's club is in, in 2016, 2017. That was just a mock-up. That was just a mock-up for uh, a cover. Say this is what this is what it could look like. So, uh, all right, next one. And then like the free for uh, just like Transformers and GI Joe uh, clubs. If you were a member of the club, you got a free figure. So the idea here would have been again that's a really rough head sculpt. We would have done a, uh, a new head sculpt. We would have done a actually that's probably something we actually most likely would have happened. I would have. Looking at all the figures, would have been doing Toka from Leonardo. Um, and he would have come with his file card and everything. So that would have been kind of a, if you would have joined the club for 40 or so bucks, you would have gotten, you know, your X number of magazines per year and a free figure and some other cool features. So next one, that might be the last one. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was pretty much the idea. Uh, it, was a, it was a rough concept. We took it to them, uh, they were interested. Um, they wanted to hold off initially. I think we were talking about, we were still talking uh, through fall of 2016 and so, you know, we'd like to maybe try to launch something by 2017. They're like, well, they were saying, you know, well, probably wait to the reboot in 2018. And we're like, well, you know, we kind of need to, you know, we don't, I think we kind of came back to then and we're like, you know, not really sure if we should wait that long to, to work on it and kind of press to maybe have a little bit of a, uh, an earlier launch. and. Communication just kind of stopped and that was it. So I guess they just weren't interested at that point and it happens, that happens a lot. So we're excited that we actually had the chance to present and uh, they were interested, but that was as far as it went. So if anything ever comes of it and there's a Ninja Turtle club or convention down the road, we'll see, but this is, might be as close as you ever get. I don't know. That's it. Any questions? Oh, Greg's got a question. Yes. Well, you can right. Sorry, yeah. You kind of went over this already. You said um, there may or may not be, but your timetable was not in sync when you set this up. Is there a period of time that would elapse before you, you try again? Is it something that you're interested in or just wanting to pass on at this point? Um, I, I think I, I reached back out, and uh, uh, I, I'm not even sure who's, you know, I don't, I don't know if things have changed, if who's still, you never know if, if the email you're going to is still the same person. I know I'm not always the best to answer sometimes with my emails. Um, so I did, I kind of gave a half-hearted follow-up. Um, I'm probably not, right now, we've got other things that we're working on. It's kind of like, it's time's kind of coming on. Um, plus right now, Turtles is in a, uh, kind of a weird spot. Um, right now, it's, it's, got a, it's just got its new relaunch, which is kind of an interesting take on it, which I'm not sure how that would, how that would, uh, how that would flow with the vintage. Um, I think turtles are very for tur the turtle brand is very forward thinking, and there's nothing wrong with that. But other brands, a lot of brands that also uh, play a lot of um, focus on the past, like Transformers and Joe. Um, so I don't know if our model would work for that. Um, not that we can't. Not that we're not uh, with some of the other brands. Not that we're not forward thinking. We can't think about things with the current uh, um, branding, but. Turtles are very, I guess they're just very focused on what they're doing and very um, specific in, in, in what they what they offer. And I don't know if there's a lot of room for, and maybe that's what they decided is they didn't want to have, uh, the, the, they wanted to stay focused on what they're doing. This is, this is what we're doing, this is what Turtles is. Um, you know, I, the, 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 I don't know if the issue was the, uh, Turtles usually does not repurpose old toys. Um, our model for what we want to do if you're doing that many toys is solely based on repurposing. Or not solely, well actually it pretty much is. I mean, you can do some stuff, you can do some um, additional new molding, but you can't do like a ton. So I don't know if that might have been part of the issue with Playmates. And again, that, that also gets tricky too um, when you're dealing with, you know, we've got Nickelodeon, you've got Playmates, so you're not sure who exactly you're supposed to be talking to. Um, you've got multiple parties yet involved. 
Um, that always gets trickier. The nice thing with, with Joe Con and Bacon is that you just went to Hasbro and that was it. Um, so, I, you know, I, I really don't have any more answers other than, uh, you know, um, it was kind of a, a, a one shot. Would we ever come back to it? I, probably not. Um, like I said, it, it would be uh, it'd be kind of tricky at this point. I'm not even sure what you would what you would do, and I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know what the what the what the plan is from them, but uh, you know, I can't say never. Never say never, right? Yeah. Yes, you in the front. Are there any other mainstream brands that have been kind of orphaned that you have your eye on well, outside I, of the what, ones that you're currently working on? And, that, and we'll talk about that at the Night Shining panel. That's kind of the, the trick right now is you used to have a lot of brands and a lot of companies. Now you have not so many brands and a very, very few number of companies. Um, so it's getting tricky. Uh, Hasbro's gobbling up a lot. Uh, Mattel is falling apart. Um, you know, McFarlane still does what McFarlane does, but other than that, and then of course you got DC Direct and things like that. Um, but it's right now it, it's kind of looking at some stuff overseas, like we're doing with Red Man and some of these more um, startups, the independent companies like Spiro Studios with the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. Um, I think that is kind of the future for some of this stuff, um, but. It's like I said, it's getting tricky when you have so many of these brands being owned by the same company, and and, and them not kind of fulfilling. It, it it's 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 very different than it was five years ago. So it's it's uh, it's taken kind of a, a new way of, of looking at things and kind of looking more towards, um, which is like how we've done these two shows, the Robocon and this show, is being more focused and more niche as opposed to trying to go after. Um, a big brand that has 18 different people who are all thinking they know what they want the brand to be, and then it's you know it's just it's 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 tricky. So would we be opposed to getting something like that? No, but in this climate right now with Hascon and things like that, there's I don't think there'd be any interest on their part. Um, not that there'd probably be any that not that we would have any relationship probably with. Uh, has at this point with uh, the, you know um, finality of the Jocom and uh, Botcon, but I don't know. Now it's tough. So like I said, there's a lot of great brands out there, but it's, it's we're just at a weird point right now. Like with the way TV shows are coming back, everything's getting rebooted. So there's again that's been the issue for years, but uh, I, I'm kind of looking more for the fresher, newer stuff, you know, stuff that needs, that's going to kind of catch on, so, so no, there probably won't be a, uh, I can't even think of the, yeah, it won't be a Power Rangers fan club from us or, or convention. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you guys for coming out for this, uh, for the show. Uh, we'll have a couple more panels today, um, but, uh, yeah, this is just our, our first kickoff, so we're excited that uh, everybody's kind of showing up today, and that's it. Thanks.